My name is Alex Boyd with Rio Grande, and today I am here to teach you how to customize your bench pin. As a bench jeweler, I spend a huge chunk of my day staring down and working off this little slab of wood. And if I make a few little modifications to it, it will make my day run so much smoother. There are a lot of shapes of metal that I use commonly, whether that's tubing, rod, little pieces of sheet. Um, and with a few cuts here, doing a little bit of file work, I can hold each of these pieces of metal with much more stability, much less wear and tear on my hand, and just make my life easy. The first step to customizing your bench pin is going to be to draw the design out in pencil. Technically, you could just use a pencil and freehand draw the whole thing, but I like to use a few more tools. I want to have a pair of dividers, a ruler, and a circle template. The first mark I'm going to do is it will establish two sections. The section I use for cutting out rings for sizing and a wedge-shaped area that I use for piercing sheet. What I'm going to do is take my dividers and set them to about a half an inch and then mark about two inches back onto my bench pin. Just about there. It doesn't need to be exact. It's not rocket science. So I'm just going to take my dividers and run them down from that point like so. And then I'll take my pencil and just run it through the mark I just made. Great. Now I want to establish where the wedge will be. I'm going to do that about one inch further into the pen, the pin here. Make a mark there and then use my ruler to go from this initial starting point to that mark. And there we go. Now I want to make a little notch that will allow me to hold ring shanks in place. So I'm going to make a little mark about a half an inch into this section and then take my dividers again and set them to I would say somewhere between an eighth of an inch and a quarter inch and make a mark there and then widen them up about an eighth of an inch more and make another mark then take my pencil and draw that out like so. Now I'm going to make the section that holds a ring clamp. I'm going to take my circle template and I've got a circle here that is about one and an eighth inch and I'm going to use maybe a quarter to a third of that, place it on the edge here and just trace that out like so. Now I'm going to draw out the section that I use for holding rod and tubing in place. I want to make a mark about two and a half inches back from the front of the bench pin on both sides. Now I will just draw, use the ruler to draw that line all the way across. And then I'm going to back that up about a quarter inch or so and draw another line. So the next section I want to have is a little dish for holding stones in place. Um, I want to find the center of the pin. This is about, it's a little over two and an eighth inch. So I will do one and a sixteenth. Mark about there. And then I will go about a half an inch on each side of that. And I want to make this about a half an inch wide. And from here, I'm just going to draw that by hand. Make sure I like the look of that. And then there's one more little thing that I like to put here, and it is honestly one of the most useful parts of my bench pin. It's a little ledge that I'll use for holding rings on their side to file. And I'm just going to freehand that about a quarter of an inch or so back from the corner and at a little bit of an angle, maybe a 45 degree angle. 
So now I'm going to swap out the number 2 aught blade I have in here for a number 6 blade. Not to be confused with a 6 aught. The 6 is a very large blade, really great for cutting through thicker things like wood. I am sawing out the section I use for sizing rings. Now I'm sawing out the section, the wedge section that I use for holding sheet while piercing. Now I'm sawing out the section I use for holding ring clamps in place. Now that I've done my cuts, I'm going to refine the forms using a few different files. I have my zero cut flat file, I have a zero cut half round file, and I have a number two cut flat needle file. I want to round out this section that will hold rings to cut out chunks for ring sizings. I want to just refine this little semicircle here, not because it needs to be, but because I have obsessive compulsive disorder, and if it doesn't look smooth, it's going to bug me. And then I want to file my little shelf right here at this point on the corner. So now I'm going to use my flat needle file, number two cut, to round out my ring sizing area. And then I am going to use a large bulber in my flex shaft. This is about seven millimeters, um, but anything in that range will work fine. I will use that to dish out the stone dish. So now I'm going to file a groove for holding rod and tubing. As you can see, I moved this over to my clamp. It just makes it be a little easier to file along the length of it here. I am using a zero cut square file. And I want to mention that all these files I've been using are the same ones I use for all my metal work. So what I'm going to do is start filing in the center between those two grooves, holding the square file on edge like so and I'm going to file until the edges meet up with the lines that I drew. So here's how I shape my bench pin. I want to show you how I use the various sections that I made. First we have the ring sizing area. It's really easy to hold a ring steadily over this section and saw through it like so. There we go, that's about a size there. Then we have this wedge shape here, which is perfect for piercing out sheet. It allows you to have the metal supported on both sides rather than just on one side when you are sawing out sheet. Then we have this little ledge right here and this is great for holding rings on their side to file them clean. Um, it takes very little hand strength to hold that ring steady. Then we've got the rod and tubing holder back here. Once again, it's a hand strength saver. It just lets you hold it firmly in place without it shifting around on you. And then We've got this little dish here, which is great for holding small elements or stones. It's especially useful when you're setting a lot of little stones and you want to keep them handy to grab quickly. So that's how I customize my bench pin and how I use the different parts of it. There are a million ways to customize your bench pin, but really think about the jobs that you do all the time and how you can customize your pin to make those jobs more efficient and easier to do. This is less than $10. Don't be precious about it. Um, make some changes. If it works, great. You, you made your life easier. If it doesn't, you learned something. So that's it for customizing your bench pin. I'm Alex Boyd with Rio Grande. Thanks for watching.